Pennsylvania's state system of higher education, 14 universities, infinite opportunities. Hello, I'm Frank Brogan, the Chancellor of the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education, and welcome to another installment of Infinite Opportunities. This is our opportunity as a system to talk to the people of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania about our wonderful 14 state-owned universities, home to 100,000 students and some of the best faculty, staff, and administration you'll find in all of higher education. We have a very special panel with us today to talk about something that's an integral part of higher education and yet still doesn't get the kind of exposure that it so readily deserves. It also has a tremendous number of opportunities in the world of the private sector to be able to transform students into people who have a cutting edge knowledge regarding the arts. And that's what we'll be discussing today, the arts in higher education and in the Pennsylvania State System of higher education. With us today are panelists to my right, uh, David Miller. David is an assistant professor of theater at Bloomsburg University. Uh, to my extreme left, Dr. Hugo Eikach, who is co-chair of the Department of Music and Theater at California University. And along with him today, a very special guest, one of our students, Jacob Urbanic, who is a senior in the commercial music technology major field of study at California University. So you two know each other pretty well, I would suspect. Well. Yes? Yeah. We're delighted to have all three of you, and welcome to our program, Infinite Opportunities. I'd like to spend the first couple of minutes just hearing a little bit about each of you and what you do at your respective universities. Of course, we know that the arts covers a gigantic waterfront of possibilities, and today we're talking about two of those components, the performing arts in terms of theater as well as commercial music. There's so much more we could talk about, so the burden is heavy for you guys <laughs> to be able to, to do well on behalf of all your colleagues who represent the broad swath of the arts that such an important part of our system. Let's start uh, with uh, you, David. Tell us a little bit about Bloomsburg and its approach to the uh, issue of performing arts, especially theater. Sure. Uh, so I have the unique pleasure of teaching acting, directing, and playwriting. It was actually um, when I started there five years ago, I saw that as a job description and I thought it was too good to be true because I love all of those different aspects. And that also relates to how we approach theater, certainly as a, uh, a liberal arts organization that is Bloomsburg University, but it's also a real liberal arts approach to theater making that all students have to learn all aspects. We have three different disciplines within that. We have a performing arts, uh, performers um, emphasis, rather, a design technology emphasis and integrated, which um, meshes both of those. And so that everybody has a track, but they also make sure that they all learn the fundamentals of design, the fundamentals of acting, the fundamentals of directing as they go along so that they are a well-rounded artist and, and hopefully just artistic citizen, really, as it is. Well, I think that's an important uh, point in that many people think that when students attend a program dedicated to the arts in higher education, they only take arts-oriented coursework. Uh, people aren't sometimes aware that students are students and take other general education programs uh, and other related topics beyond that which is their major in the world of the arts. Um, if you would, Dr. Ikech, tell us a little bit about California's approach and a little bit about your very specialized program in commercial music. Thank you. We do think it's very special. And to dovetail what David was saying, uh, we, we like to have well-rounded students that can do many things well. I always say we teach about life. We just happen to do it through music and technology. Um, our program is a three-part major. It's part music, so we want to put out people that are competent musicians. It's a big part technology, and that's not just music technology, but all mixed media technology. And then, of course, business, because when our students graduate, we find that they have to be their own business. They have to be entrepreneurs. They have to go out there and, and carve their own niche, so to speak. So we try to give them as many tools in their belt as possible to get a job and uh, doing what they love. And they have many opportunities to do that. Mentioning theater, we make all of our commercial music technology majors take theatrical lighting. Because getting the job and not getting the job may be the difference between being able to run a soundboard and a lighting board. 
So we have many opportunities for them to do this, and I'm sure Jacob can tell you some of his favorites. <laughs> no, that, that's fascinating, and a great <laughs> approach, by the way, on, on both parts to be able to embed within the curriculum different opportunities within the world of the arts. So, uh, Jacob, let's talk to you a little bit about, hear about your experiences at California. What yeah. drew you to it in the first place? Uh, what drew it to me in the first place was uh, the, the program as a whole. Um, when I went down and auditioned, uh, you know, I talked to Dr. Icatch and uh, Dr. Uh, Cher at the time, and we were talking about, you know, how they modeled it after a few different schools, and, you know, I really, I sat in on a couple classes whenever I went down to tour, and um, it really looked like a program that I wanted to be a part of because it encompassed all the three that uh, Dr. Akach mentioned before, the business side, the tech side, and the performance side. And all three of those, you know, were of interest to me because I wanted to, you know, get out and by the time I graduate uh, in May, you know, I want to have multiple different spectrums of, you know, the, the music branch that I can go to and, you know, get a job. So. Fantastic. This is a good opportunity now to segue uh, in our program. We're going to go visit Kutztown University that has some wonderful programs in the arts. Take a little bit of a field trip here. So let's head to Kutztown. In 1999, the KU Music Department received its first accreditation by NASM, the National Association of Schools of Music. NASM recommended that we should make a plan to upgrade our pianos. And a long journey started since then, which only ended this past year when we received the status of becoming an old Steinway school. An old Steinway school is a school whose piano inventory consists of at least 90% of Steinway pianos. It is a very special designation to have as there are only about 175 worldwide institutions which have been awarded the special distinction. Being an all Steinway school for Kutztown University accomplishes several things. The first, it gives our students the best pos possible performing experience with the best possible instrument on the market today. Steinway's name commands respect, prestige, has existed well over a century with the greatest artists in the world, and now being an Steinway school also creates an allure and a magnetism and a prestige for the university as a whole to recruit and retain the best possible piano students that we have. And it also guarantees all of the guest artists that come to Kutztown University that we bring in as a Department of Music to perform on exceptional quality in instruments, not only in sound, but in technique as well. Being a pianist is not about the way you move your fingers. It's all about the sound that's produced. That's what music is about. It's about sound. Being an all Steinway school means that we have a standard of excellence when it comes to music. When we use the best instrument possible, we create the best sound possible. Therefore, we create the best music possible. Playing and bef performing on a Steinway enables me to better express what I feel when I am on stage and what I feel when I'm performing the piece. Performing and practicing to, to a Steinway piano contributes to my piano playing, to my career and to my ambitions for the future of, of being a concert pianist. As a teacher, this is the perfect medium to help the students understand the ultimate in sound and expand their musical abilities. Performing on a Steinway piano is really exciting, even terrifying. You, you get to a point where it's not that you're just playing the piano, the piano is even playing you, and you have this sort of connection, and that's when magic really happens. Invest in me. Invest in me. Invest in me. Invest in me. 
Invest in me. Invest in me. I'll be your future public servant. I'll be your future advertising executive. I'll be your future accountant. I will be your future motivational speaker. I'll be your future lawmaker. I will be your future teacher. Invest in me. I'll be your future videographer. Welcome back. With us today again on our panel, we have David Miller, Assistant Professor of Theater at Bloomsburg University, Dr. Hugo Eikatch, the co-chair in the Department of Music and Theater at California University, welcome back, and Jacob Urbanic, who is a senior in the Commercial Music Program at California University. We began talking a little bit uh, about students in that first round, since we're fortunate enough to have one with us today, Jacob. Um, Jacob mentioned that he is a senior, will graduate in May, mm -hmm. and and hopefully we'll find a great job in the world of commercial music, <laughs> which is part of the idea here. Um, I thought it might be interesting to our viewers to talk a little bit about the profile of the students who are drawn to your areas, whether that is um, theater or whether that is commercial music, just to see uh, what an average student looks like who might be drawn in that direction. So Dr. Eikatch, how about if we start with you? Well, it's interesting you mentioned the student because when we developed this program, we thought, what does this student have to be when they finish? And then we worked backwards and built curriculum and uh, experiences to get that finished product. And I think that finished product that we had in mind uh, had so much to do with the personality of w who we were and how we were trying to put forth uh, the information and the experiences. And that drew a certain type of student. Uh, there are probably two main types of students we get. We get some that are musicians first and maybe tech interested second and then some students that are just mostly tech, they really love the tech. But we think if you want to be a, a sound engineer or someone involved in the technology, we think you'll be a better engineer if you're a musician first because you'll think like a musician, you'll, you'll hear like a musician, you'll talk like a musician, and we think aesthetically you'll make better decisions as an engineer. On the flip side, if you are a tech person but you're not as, as uh, versed as a musician, you will be by the time you leave <laughs> because you have to be a competent musician and um, uh, I think if you're an engineer and you know you want to be an engineer but you actually have a facility on an instrument I think you'll have more street credibility when you're working with other musicians and I think one uh, uh, helps the other so our students are busy uh, our curriculum is pretty demanding and uh, we make sure that they're practicing every day. You know, we ask our students to practice two hours a day. We have practice logs. So in addition to all of their um, assignments, practicums, and um, technical uh, studies, they have to spend time with their instrument. And uh, I, I think that actually is exciting to the students because it is a challenge. And the ones that think, holy smokes, this is a lot of work, well, maybe they should be in something else. Because if they're going to be successful, they need to have a very, um, and I'm sure theater will agree with this, you have to have a work ethic that's, that's just uh, unquestionable. And uh, those are the kind of people that I want to hire, people that I know who will get jobs done and who are used to working hard and long. And uh, that's what we try to put out. That's a great profile, and, and again, the work ethic piece is uh, something I'm familiar with when I was a president of a university in Florida. We had a very successful commercial music program there, and the amount of time that the faculty members and the students put into that uh, curriculum was extraordinary, and the faculty would regularly say, this is what commercial music is really like. You have no hours. You work day and night uh, in, in remarkable ways, and it really showed in the quality of the students. And you have to program. complete the work. There's no, oh, it's good enough. Right. No. Either it's done well or it's not done at all. Has to be, they used to say, has to be perfect. Absolutely. Or as close to it as we can get. Yeah. Jacob, you talked about yourself a little bit earlier uh, and told me during the break that you are a longtime guitar player. Yes. And so you fit part of that profile. Mm -hmm. But you and the students that you're with every day, uh, do you see any common thread in the students who are part of the commercial arts? Yeah. Um, um, all of the students in the program, I mean, you, they want to be musicians. They want to be tech people. They want to be performers. Um, and I think that's a, a great dynamic to have because 
you're around all these ambitious people who share similar interests, um, but maybe a little bit different. Myself personally, I lean towards the tech side a little bit more. Um, my Again, my aspiration is to be an audio engineer, uh, working for a big company somewhere, and being around other performers and people who are very, very proficient in their instrument. Um, when we go into the recording studio and you know we're working on you know music for you know a, it could be a musical, it could be orchestra, it could be um, you know band music. Um, so whatever it is, to have a musician who's quality because of all the practice they log, um, you know it makes my job a lot easier. You know behind the board uh, because you know it, it's so much easier. Say you know you have two bars before you come in and they know exactly you know what I'm talking about and. Um, and again, it, 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 we share the same lingo and, and all the same you know, nomenclature. So there's no, you know, what, what's he mean by bars? What's he mean by, you know, tempo and, and this and that? So we're all on the same page. Um, and again, like I said, we're all ambitious people and we all want to strive uh, and, and really, you know, do the best that we can when it comes to performing or being a business person or um, a tech person. Fantastic. Do you have any leaders yet for gra after graduation uh, out there in the commercial music industry? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking. I've been interning at a, a recording studio down in Pittsburgh uh, called Mr. Small's Recording Studio down on the north side. Um, and I've been doing that for about three years now. Fantastic. And then uh, after post-graduation, I'm looking at moving to either uh, New York or L.A. Um, to work for either Sony, Warner Brothers, or Universal. Fantastic. Well, if any of you folks are watching, I recommend uh, <laughs> Jacob to you. Uh, Dr. Miller. Uh, let's talk to you a little bit about um, Bloomsburg and about the work you're doing there. You, you talked a little bit about uh, some of the similar kinds of components, the duality of uh, the curriculum that requires students on both sides of the ledger to intermix in terms of their skill sets. Um, sure. the, the kinds of students that you see coming through the theater program. Tell us a you little bet. bit about that. Yeah, I think there is there's so much overlap in the performing arts. I think the the passion and discipline combination is so important. And sometimes I think some uh, young artists may think, oh, just having the passion or some sort of innate talent is enough, and it never is. Uh, you do have to learn all the different aspects. You have to learn to be disciplined. You have to learn to get to opening night because opening night's not going to be moved for you if you're not ready. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're Spider-Man on Broadway, and then but that saw Spider-Man on Broadway, it, it yes. didn't, yeah, it didn't go well. It's not a good model for timelines. So, um, so yeah, so that discipline and that passion is really important, and I think. Um, for our program, in the theater program, there's a variety of types of students. I think there are students, like we were talking about, uh, uh, about being so into it right from the very start, and you know this is what you want to do, and you follow that path. I think others um, come to it a little bit later, and some of them do come to it through a course at the university. They may be in Fundamentals of Acting or Intro to Theater and realize that they had been missing out on something all along. And I think one of the most uh, likely suspects for us, or that I look for anyway, are the students who are really theater majors in their hearts, but they can't really admit to that. Um, I was that in undergrad. I had gone to this university that I went to because of the theater program, um, but I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to be a theater major because I didn't think it was practical because I didn't understand what I understand now right. that there are jobs in theater. Um, one of the things that, that we have to answer all over and over again for our students and for their parents oftentimes mm -hmm. is are there jobs? And can the, you do and me the a favor? Is yes. And the sure. viewers, can you just give us some of the titles of the myriad jobs that go along with theater besides the person standing in the spotlight reading the lines? Definitely, definitely. Well, there's actually, um, for example, one of the jobs that I just talked to a student about um, that I turned her on to is she said, well, I, I love theater and I love history, but I don't know how to bring those together. And I'm not really a performer. I'm not really a designer. And I told her, well, do you know about dramaturgy? And dramaturgy is a more literary role on a production. And she's a, now she's our dramaturg on Harvey that we're doing in the spring. And what she's doing is researching the time period, the context for the world of the play as a supplement to help the actors and the designers understand that world to better do their job. So I love that's one of those artistic jobs yeah. that's just not even behind the scenes. It's actually in the rehearsal room, but the audience isn't going to see it. Um, and I went through, uh, recently I also went through a playbill 
bill of a recent off-Broadway show, and just uh, one of my student workers went through and just pulled out, and and she, her arm got tired from just you know turning pages and writing down all the jobs in the playbill. Um, another, I think, good marker of the jobs in the arts is uh, there was a recent um, National Endowment for the Arts study done, and they had just completed a 15-year study, and named the actual tally for the $7.1 billion industry that is theater. That's just theater. That doesn't include all of the performing arts, which is enormous. So That's live somebody, theater. Yeah, live theater. $7.1 billion in the United States. That's so right. somebody's got to have jobs in there to <laughs> somehow add up uh, to that. But certainly, yeah, behind the scenes, um, everybody who's doing all the wonderful marketing and development of funds for those shows and things like that is and tremendous. And so important for students to understand is uh, again, the number of jobs that exist out there in the world of the arts, not just music and not just uh, live uh, theater, Definitely. but in the arts, it's extraordinary. Good paying, good jobs that uh, can last a lifetime. This is a good opportunity now to take another field trip. So we're going to take you two home. Uh, we're going to go to California right. University and see how California is addressing some of the issues relative to the arts. Let's go to California University. My name is Greg Davis. I am an assistant professor of music at Cal U. This program is unique in that it combines three facets of music education. We take a look at the business side of things, we take a look at the technology side of things, and we also take a look at then formal music training. Those three forms of study combined to make what we have as being this commercial music technology major. My name is Shane Turner. I'm a commercial music technology major. One of the big reasons I wanted to come here is they offer Pro Tools certification, which is important because it's the gold standard in the recording industry. My name is Jacob Urbanek. Uh, I'm a commercial music technology major here at Cal U. The CMT program, it's really great at preparing you for things like this. You get your private instruction, and then you also learn about working with other musicians and playing in a group. I'm Steven Grizenda. I'm a commercial music technology major. When you take something that's just theory, it definitely has a lot to do with the teacher and the professor that's giving you the information. And I really think we have a really good faculty here that really drives home information that is really important. My name is Hugo Icatch. I'm the co-chair of the Department of Music and Theater. We've worked very hard to stay current, and this major specifically, we talk to people in the industry, we ask them what they needed. The music industry is part of the much larger media industry anymore. It's not like you can go out into the industry with a music degree and say, well, I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to make a living with that one skill. You need to be able to apply your skills, not just in a music setting, but maybe, for example, in a video setting or in some type of game design. They just incorporated a music industry class, and it's very pivotal because you learn a lot about copyright law. Part of the uh, MRT curriculum is actually taking apart um, XLR cables and resoldering, uh, making them from scratch. So we're giving them the opportunity to really apply the skills of using the gear and using the technology as opposed to just learning about it. One of the things we do with our business classes is we try to produce entrepreneurs, people who will make a business for themselves. They work with the business department. They take classes like principles of management, principles of marketing. The connections is, I mean, it's the name of the game when it comes to the music industry. Now, I've interacted with people in the industry. This program has opened up amazing doors for me, for my band, for anybody in this program. I feel like I've found the, my calling in life in music to me is just that emotion and that drive to really want to do something important and special and have something to say. I think that any parent would want their student to go not only to a program that fulfills that passion and sort of feeds that hunger, but would give them skills to then go into the workforce and put that passion into action. This career is more than just music, it's a lifestyle and I really think that's something they drive home here and that's an ideal I'm going to take in my future. We make about 45 million pounds of chips in a quarter. That equates to about 200 million pounds of potatoes, which is quite a few. What's interesting with M&T is, is they're a small town bank, and as we've grown, they've also grown with us. They've got the resources that you would need in order to go big, but they also have that friendly local community feel so that it makes it seem easier than it probably is. back and welcome back to our panelists. Uh, today's topic on infinite opportunities, of course, the arts in our 14 
state-owned universities. And we're li delighted to have these uh, great panelists with us. We're going to go right to the questions in this last segment. We want to get as much information to our viewers as we possibly can. And uh, uh, Dr. Eyecatch, we're going to start with you. The curriculum for a program in commercial music or a program in live performing theater is probably very different uh, than a traditional curriculum for other programs. How did you develop yours? Well, we looked at a finished product first, and we spoke with uh, people in the industry and asked them, what are all of the characteristics, what are all the skill sets that our finished product person needs to have? And then working backwards, we built curriculum to get them to that point. So we had the luxury of having a program that didn't exist for us. So we built from scratch, and all of the courses uh, followed a sequence to get us to that final uh, product. And as I mentioned earlier, we try to give them as many tools in their belt as possible so that they are going to find their niche within that ever-changing industry. And that's one of the things that's different too. Math equations are, they stay the same, right? The arts continue to change with technology. I mean, a good aesthetic is going to stay. That remains constant, uh, but how you might deliver that art has changed with technology. So we have to constantly be tweaking our um, curriculum to stay up with the latest um, trends in the arts and entertainment technology. And, and we feel pretty good about what we've done so far. Fantastic. David, how about uh, live theater? Sure. Well, I think one of the most important things for us is the balance of finding um, a way to teach students about the history of the profession, the activity of the profession, and then the profession of the profession. <laughs> so really trying to make sure that they have a, a foundation in a all grounding. those areas. Yeah, all those areas so they're really able to sort of springboard into actually creating theater collaboratively and to go on into their professional life as well. That's terrific. And uh, Jacob, I'm going to turn to you as the recipient of all of this good work, uh, and I imagine you've uh, rubbed elbows with some great faculty members and had a very strong curriculum that you're going to take with you when you leave uh, the institution in May and go out there into that big beautiful world that's waiting for you. <laughs> yeah. Tell us a little bit about your personal experience at Cal. Yeah, um, down at Cal, uh, they really do a great job with the program to make make it so that you're taking not only your core classes, which revolve around you know music, uh, you know at primarily, but then you take multimedia and graphic design classes, video classes, uh, theater, you know, lighting that we talked about before, business classes. So the curriculum really does round you into this this. Again, what Dr. Ikech was saying, that end goal that you're going for, you know, you really do have all the tools to go out and make a living. Um, and that's really one of the, the best things about the program, I think. Well, I haven't spent much time with you, but I think you're going to be a hit when you get out there in the world <laughs> Thank you. of commercial I that. music. I agree. Somebody doesn't Thank know you. it right now, but they're going to be very fortunate to have you come and join their operation. I want to thank all three of you for being with us today. The time goes so quickly, and just your two areas of the arts are so large and complex. It was really great of you to share some time with, uh, with me and, of course, with our viewers today on another installment yet of Infinite Opportunities. Thank you for joining us. I'm Frank Brogan. Come back again. Come back next week to learn more of the infinite opportunities at the state system's 14 universities or visit us online 